Hello everyone, my name is Pashan Julian and I'm an instructor here at AHI and today I have the distinct pleasure of talking to you guys about property management and today we're going to cover various aspects of the property management business and a property manager in the state of Illinois is just someone that's going to be involved in the leasing, managing, marketing and maintenance of real estate. The property manager has three principal responsibilities. Number one would be to achieve the owner's objectives. Number two is to make sure that the property generates enough or sufficient income for the owner. And then also they have to preserve or increase the value of the property or the income that the property might generate. Now in Illinois, there these functions are governed by the Real Estate License Act. And in Illinois, a real estate property manager is required to have a real estate license. And the real estate licensee must perform property management services and work under the supervision of a sponsoring broker. Now, the Illinois Real Estate License Act gives specific exemptions for individuals where they are not required to have a license. If they are a resident in a property that they actually are managing, they can actually do that without a real estate license at all. But it must be their principal place of residence and they must reside at the property that they're managing. Now, Illinois law also permits those who practice is limited to leasing or renting residential real estate and limited to also collecting rent or negotiating leases or similar activities well they can obtain a special license called a leasing agent license it's a limited scope license and if they're going to engage in additional activities like the sales or disposition of real estate well they were going to have to have a broader scope license which we call a broker's license in the state of illinois now in order to create a property management relationship, it starts with the property management agreement. And the property management agreement is what actually creates the agency relationship. An agency is a special relationship. The property manager is considered a general agent of the owner. And their first responsibility is to make sure that they return the highest amount possible to the owner. And they have to make sure that their duties are consistent with the owner's objectives. And so the management agreement basically defines all the duties, all of the responsibilities of each party. That includes both the real estate company that's managing the property and the owner that owns the property. Now, these documents, which we refer to as the agency agreement, are used as a guide in the operating of the property. And it also helps if there's any future disputes related to the relationship. One of the chief things that are required for an individual to manage property is to set the rents and then to collect the commission. Well, the residential, real estate, the residential real estate managers often earn a commission based on the annual rent. And usually it's going to be either a percentage of the annual rent or a flat fee based on the annual, annual rent collections. And most of the time, the property manager is required to report back to the owner. And there are various financial reports that the property manager may have to provide the owner. It may be the cash flow reports or a profit and loss statement. It could also be an operating budget. And an operating budget is based on anticipated revenues, anticipated expenses, and then it also has to incorporate the owner's long-term goals. And there's going to be allocations for fixed expenses, and also we're going to allocate money for cash reserves for variable expenses that might occur as we're managing the property. And renting the property is really, really important. Effective rental of the property is essential. And the property manager's primary concern with the financial health of the property as we move forward into the future. And renting the property is very, very important as you perform these duties. And setting the rental rate is one of the biggest concerns of the property manager. Rental rates are influenced by supply and demand. And so the rental income has to be sufficient enough to cover the operating budget and the fixed charges that the property is going to incur. But it also has to provide a fair return for the owner's investment. But it, it has to be in, in line with the prevailing rates in the area. So a lot of times the property manager is going to do a market analysis to see what the rental rates are in the area and make sure that the rental rates are in line with what everyone else might be charging in that particular market area. If the property is rented 100% of the times, well, a lot of times that might mean that the rents are too low. If the property has a high vacancy rate where people are not seeking to rent in the particular property, well, that could mean that the rates are possibly too high. But the vacancy rate is a very good indicator of whether to increase or decrease the rates that you might be charging to the public. As it says here, current vacancy rate is a 
chief indicator. And the rental rates for residential real estate are usually based on per unit per month. It's the monthly rate per unit. But in the commercial world, things are a little bit different. Usually the rents are based on an annual or monthly fee that's based on the square footage of the property that's being leased. Now, selecting tenants is very, very important. Of course, the property manager should make sure that the premises is suitable for the tenant with respect to the size of the unit, the location of the unit, and the amenities uh, that the unit might offer to the tenant. And then, of course, the tenant has to be able to pay whatever the rental rate is. And in the commercial world, the tenant is likely, if the tenant is likely to expand in the future, the property manager should take that into consideration because we don't want to have the tenant to outgrow the space in the commercial world. So we want a suitable space that might be able to accommodate their growth if we see that that is a potential for the future. Now, in the residential world, the property manager has to comply with not only the federal law, but also the state law, and then many municipalities have local laws related to fair housing and selecting, selecting of tenants. And so you have to make sure you're following all of the rules, the federal, state, and local, and it's really important. And the property manager's chief concern is that they collect the money that would be necessary to take care of the expenses and then, of course, return a fair return to the owner. And so you have to make sure that you can collect the rent. And the property manager, of course, should only accept tenants that could be likely uh, considered as individuals that would be able to meet the financial obligation. And so the terms of the rental payment are going to be clearly spelled out in the lease document because that's the governing contract. And of course, we want to maintain good tenant relations. Obviously, if you can keep a tenant in your property forever, that's going to be the best situation for you because high turnover rate results in greater expenses because you're going to have to spend additional money on advertising and additional money on redecorating. Every time someone lose, moves, it's going to cost money for the owner and reduce uh, some of the profitability of the property. And so it's very important that you place tenants in the property that are suitable, and hopefully they'll be long-term tenants. But when you have to, uh, to go out and get new tenants, of course, you're going to lose money because you have to advertise and market the property. Even though the property manager is an agent for the owner, they need to make sure they're keeping good tenant relations so to make the property more profitable for the owner that they're managing the property for. And maintaining the property is very critical to the relationship with the owner, but also it's very critical to make sure that you're meeting the federal, state, and local laws with respect to occupancy. And the property manager must be able to uh, assess the building's needs and how to best meet the needs of the building. And so the property manager is going to make sure that they're doing proper preventive maintenance. Of course, if you're doing proper preventive maintenance, like the seasonal painting and uh, 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 seasonal painting and the servicing of the appliances like the furnaces and the heating and cooling system, well, if you're doing proper preventive maintenance, well, you're going to have less problems with respect to items that may fail or require corrective maintenance or repair maintenance. Corrective and repair maintenance involves actually uh, repairing the items that keep the building functioning or replacing items that may be broken because of a lack of preventive maintenance. Now, routine maintenance is really important. That's the day-to-day -day routine activities like cleaning the common areas or providing or performing uh, minor carpentry or plumbing adjustments, which are very important. You have to be very responsive to the tenant's needs. And providing regular schedule upkeep of the heating, air conditioning, and landscaping is very critical because it definitely is a statement of the pride of ownership of the property management company and the owner of the property. Now, in some situations, most likely in commercial situations, the property manager may have to engage in construction or renovations of the space to make it suitable to meet the tenant's needs. And renovations could include uh, things that create additional marketability, or could it actually increase the potential income of the space as well. And so it's really important that the property manager in a commercial world be well-versed in construction and renovation activities. Now, 
in the property management world, the property manager has to be concerned about health and environmental concerns, and there are plenty of those. Uh, there are a variety of environmental issues that you might be faced with as a property manager. Waste disposal is very important, air quality, environmental audits, uh, proper, proper disposal of hazardous waste is, is critical in uh, certain situations. And then recycling opportunities for tenants is something that's definitely growing in popularity. And then, of course, the building-related illnesses is very important, or the sick building syndrome are things that we definitely want to make sure that we're well-versed in if we're going to manage property. In the, the property management world, it's very clear that the federal state and local laws dictate that we adhere to the Americans with Disability Act. The Americans with Disability Act is a body of laws, of course, that were enacted to help individuals that may be impaired by various disabilities have suitable accommodations that meet their life safe or healthy needs. And it's very important that we make sure that happens. And so there's two important titles that we have to deal with uh, that were uh, written into the Americans with Disability Act. There's Title I, which deals with employment. And it requires that if you have one, uh, excuse me, have 15 or more employees that you adopt a non-discriminatory hiring procedure and that you hire qualified individuals regardless of their disability. And then Title III deals with access. Uh, the Americans with Disability Act prohibits discrimination in commercial properties when we look at it as far as the federal law is concerned. The ADA recommends that properties that offer goods and services be uh, reasonably, achievably accommodable for people that have disabilities, and they must provide access to the facilities and services that they offer to the general public, even if an individual may be impaired by a disability. They still should have the same access to the goods and the service. In addition to adhering to the Americans with Disability Act, the property manager has to deal with risk. Risk is very important, uh, whether it be the uh, management of the property, the security of the tenant, or the returning of revenue to the owner, risk management is a very, very big concern for the owner. And of course, the best course of action when there's a risk is to avoid the risk. If you can avoid the risk, then it prevents uh, the possibility of liability. But sometimes some risks are unavoidable. There's nothing that you can do about it. So of course, you want to try to control or mitigate the risk. Uh, and that's very important because we can sometimes, if there's a trip hazard, if we remove the trip hazard, of course, well then we're, we're going to uh, be able to control the risk. But if we put signs there, we could also notify people that there may be a potential risk, which could also reduce liability. But in some situations, you can't avoid it, you cannot control it, and so the best course of action would be to try to transfer it. And the way that we transfer risk is to get insurance. Uh, we are transferring whatever the burden is. If it were to happen, well, instead of the company being liable, we would transfer that burden to the insurance company. Now, the last thing we would do is to retain the risk. Retaining the risk would only be an option if it were a very limited risk that doesn't create a significant liability or not risk us violating any of the rules of law. And so what we just went through was basically an acronym that we use to deal with risk. It's ACTOR, A-C-T-O-R. That's avoid the risk. If you can't avoid it, control the risk or transfer the risk. And the last thing that we would do again is to retain the risk when it's a very limited risk that's not going to be very expensive or cause us to break any of the rules of law. The next thing that we have to be concerned about is the security of tenants. It's very important as recent court decisions have held that owners and their agents are responsible for harm that may be inflicted on the tenants by intruders of residential property. And so we have to make sure that the properties are secure and safe for the occupants. There are various types of insurance that people will procure to protect them or to reduce or transfer the risk burden. One of the types of coverage that people would pur purchase is fire and hazard coverage. Fire and hazard coverage is for loss uh, or direct or indirect loss from damage from a fire or other hazards such as windstorm or hail or smoke uh, or civil insurrection. Now there's another policy that people would purchase to give them additional uh, transfer of possible liability. It's called consequential use, I mean, excuse me, consequential loss, use, and occupancy. And this covers the consequences of disaster, including the loss of rent or revenue if there's something that happens with the property that's being managed. 
Now, contents and personal property, this covers the actual contents and personal property during the periods when they are not on the premises. And then there's also liability and casualty coverage. Liability covers risk from when the public enters the premises, and then casualty is coverage against theft, burglary, or vandalism, uh, or uh, machinery damages, uh, as well as health and other accident insurance is covered under the, the casualty umbrella. Now, workers' compensation is really important when you have employees. Uh, it, this would cover the claims for medical or hospital payments for injuries that the employee may have sustained uh, as they're going through the normal course of their employment. And then uh, the owner, or the, excuse me, the property manager or the owner can also get a bond, which would cover against financial losses that results from the criminal acts of an employee, uh, whether it be their negligence or something that they do that's a derelict of their defined assigned duties. Uh, that's what would, what would be covered if you had a bond. Now, there are sometimes situations where it may be in the best course of action for the business to purchase a motor payroll policy, which has a little bit of all of these coverages all together in one package. It has maybe some commercial coverage, uh, like fire and hazard, uh, public liability and casualty all together in one particular policy. Uh, the way that claims are determined under a insurance policy would be either one of two. It would be depreciated value uh, or current replacement costs. Depreciated value is where they give you the actual cash value. The property is insured for what it was originally worth, less depreciation. But the current replacement cost is where the property would be insured for what it would be covered, what it would cost to build or to replace the property today would be included in the current replacement cost coverage. All right, thank you guys for your time today. And that was a, a nice summary of property management with respect to the state law and some of the duties and obligations of the individuals that practice property management. I'll see you guys again in chapter 19.